this is a homebrew CW AM phone um, QRP transmitter probably made around about 1960s, early 60s something like that it was uh, handed to me by someone to find out what it was what it did, what uh, band it worked on and if I could get it working and uh, so did some investigation and um, I used a grid oscillator to uh, to check the uh, the PA tank circuit and the uh, driver tune circuit down there, and um, found that it uh, resonated at uh, around 40 meters. Strangely, though, the coil has been shorted out. Um, I tried taking the short off and trying it on 80 meters, but it wouldn't tune up on 80 meters. So I think it's uh, it's it's been modified by somebody at some point. Somebody knew what they were doing, built this. Uh, the construction quality is pretty good very very neat package um, anyway uh, the AM modulation uh, setup had been uh, disabled by removing some wires from under the chassis uh, so the HT wires weren't going to the plates of the modulator tubes which are uh, 12x7, uh, 6C5 and a couple of uh, uh, push-pull pentodes there um, and this tube here is the, is the oscillator, it's a crystal oscillator and somebody at some point had modified this to um, to put a VFO input but they'd done a pretty crappy job of it, they'd actually wired the um, the, uh, the oscillator circuit such that there was a piece of coax coming through the tank circuit um, into a new PL259 which they'd installed at the back of the chassis in here um, and what was happening was that there was there was feedback so we we're going to self oscillation at about seven megahertz whatever the tank coil was tuned to and it wouldn't matter if you had a crystal in there or not or uh, at the moment i've got this working on just with um, a signal generator feeding about half a volt into into the uh, what is now the vfo input i changed that i took the pl259 out and replaced it with a, a uh, BNC um, sealed BNC sockets, so it's got good good ground in there. Instead of running through the PA compartment, I ran the cable through the the power supply in uh, the main compartment of the rig um, under the chassis, and I fed it into the um, the grid of the oscillator tube um, with a, with a small cap. The previous person just connected this directly to the to the grid, which isn't good practice. Also, I noticed that. Um, one of the caps in the multiple capacitors here uh, is only rated at 25 volts and um, in some conditions it actually receives 35 volts so I uh, disconnected that and I, I wired in a, a new uh, new electrolytic 50 volt one I also did some extra um, suppression in here there wasn't really enough uh, suppressors so I put some additional capacitors in also on the uh, the mic input and the press the talk the press the talk had been disabled as well that the wiring needed replacing and now it seems pretty stable at um on cw um we're getting something like about 12 watts out of this uh as um the scope there and uh on a on my uh, trusty guys uh, antenna tuner it's giving around about uh 12 13 watts something like that and it's nice clean um i'll just just increase the time base on that there you go so there's the output signal really clean there's a little um pa uh, current meter it dips nicely. I had to do some modifications to the tank circuit as well. Apart from this tap, I had to put an extra silver mica cap in there to to resonate the uh, the loading capacitor. It just wasn't uh, wasn't large enough. So putting the time base on the scope back uh, more to audio frequencies. I'll put it on to AM. Feeding a tone of about uh, one kilohertz into the uh, mic socket here.
and there's the uh, AM modulation and we get a little bit less power, get around about 10 watts, or just over 10 watts um, on the AM probably because the uh, the HT voltage drops uh, drops quite a bit because you've got some extra tubes in circuit there you've got the um, 6AW5 pentodes and the push pull output and the two audio tubes at the head of that which aren't in circuit on the uh, CW mode and there we have it, nice quite a neat little uh, rig I like it <laughs> I think somebody's done a really good job with this uh, back in the 60s. Probably use it for uh, for mobile operation or something like that. Strangely, it hasn't got a transmit receiver relay in it, so we'd need an external transmit receiver relay. Um, but it is quite a quite a neat little rig. They did a did a pretty good job on it. And it's probably almost as far as I can take it now. It seems pretty reliable. And um, there you go, 1960s Homebrew transmitter. <laughs>